Hello, my name is Palma Phillips. Today I'm going to be reading to you a book that is full of hope and inspiration. This is a true story. It's the true story of Henry Brown titled Henry's Freedom Box. Henry Brown wasn't sure how old he was. Henry was a slave and slaves weren't allowed to know their birthday. What do you think the word slave means? Well, it says a slave wasn't allowed to know their birthdays, and I think that's a strict rule for such an important event in a person's life. A slave is a person who is forced to serve someone against their wishes. Look at Henry. I think he really wanted to know his birthday. Doesn't look too happy, does it? Henry and his brothers and sisters worked in the big house where the master lived. Henry's master had been good to Henry and his family. Hmm, There's another word, master. Henry is a slave to a master. And a master is someone who owns slaves. Henry's mother knew things could change. Do you see those leaves blowing in the wind? They are torn from the trees like the slave children are torn from their families. Can you see that leaf blowing? She said they are torn from the trees like slave children are torn from their families. Whenever you hear the word like and a phrase that compares two things, that's called a simile. The master called for Henry and his mother. They climbed the wide staircase. The master lay in bed with only his head above the quilt. He was very ill. He beckoned them to come closer. So Henry and his mother came closer. The master's arms were under the covers and he didn't speak. He couldn't move his arms. So what do you think he used to beckon them or to make them come forward? Maybe he used his head or his eyes to gesture. And that's something that Henry and his mother are accustomed to seeing. Some slaves were freed by their owners. Henry's heart beat fast. Maybe the master would set him free. That would be nice. But the master said, you are a good worker, Henry. I'm giving you to my son. You must obey him and never tell a lie. Henry nodded, but he didn't say thank you. That would have been a lie. Look at Henry's face. Later that day, Henry watched a bird soar high above the trees. Free bird, happy bird, Henry thought. Henry said goodbye to his family. He looked across the field. The leaves swirled in the wind. Kind of reminding him of the leaves that were torn from the trees. So what's being torn like the leaves from the trees in this sense? He is. And if you look closer, there are other people in the wagon as well. They are all being torn from their families. What a sad day. Henry worked in his new master's factory. He was good at his job. Do not tear that tobacco leaf, the boss yelled at the new boy. 
he poked the boy with a stick. Mm -hmm. If you made a mistake, the boss would beat you. Look at the other young boys there. Henry was lonely. One day he met Nancy, who was shopping for her mistress. They walked and talked and agreed to meet again. Henry felt like singing, but slaves didn't dare sing in the streets. Instead, he hummed all the way home. Look at Henry. Get that man who's possibly another master to another slave. <laughs> A good day. Months later, Henry asked Nancy to be his wife. When both their masters agreed, Henry and Nancy were married. Soon there was a little baby, then another and another. Henry knew they were very lucky. They lived together even though they had different masters. They seemed very happy. Look at all the babies they had. But Nancy was worried. Her master had lost a great deal of money. I'm afraid he will sell our children, she said. Henry sat still. He sat very still. Henry worked hard all morning. He tried to forget what Nancy had said. I wonder if he was remembering how he, it felt to be torn from his family. That looks like a worried look. No doubt he was thinking about that. His friend James came into the factory. He whispered in Henry's, to Henry, your wife and children were just sold at the slave market. No, cried Henry. Henry couldn't move. He couldn't think. He couldn't work. Twist that tobacco, the boss poked Henry. Henry twisted tobacco leaves. His heart twisted in his chest. What do you think Henry's going to do? At lunchtime, Henry rushed to the center of town. A large group of slaves was tied together. The owner shouted at them. Henry looked for his family. Father, father! Henry watched his children disappear down the road. Where was Nancy? Henry saw her the same moment she saw him. I think that might be her. Not really sure. When he wiped away his tears, Nancy too was gone. What a sad, sad day. Mm. Henry no longer sang. He couldn't hum. He went to work, and at night he ate supper and went to bed. Look at him. He's so full of anguish. How would you feel if someone took your family? Henry tried to think of happy times, but all he could see were the carts carrying away 
everyone he loved. Henry knew he would never see his family again. The text doesn't say if he ever saw his mother again either and his family, his brothers and sisters. What do you think Henry's going to do? Hmm. Many weeks passed. One morning, Henry heard singing. A little bird flew out of the tree into the open sky, and Henry thought about being free. But how? As soon as he lifted a crate, he, he knew the answer. He asked James and Dr. Smith to help him. Dr. Smith was a white man who thought slavery was wrong. They met early the next day at an empty warehouse. Henry arrived with a box. I will mail myself to a place where there are no slaves, he said. James stared at the box, then at Henry. What if you cough and someone hears you? That would be a problem. I will cover my mouth and hope, said Henry. Hmm. Henry really seems desperate. Desperate for freedom. Dr. Smith wrote on the box to William H. Johnson, Art Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Do you notice there aren't any street numbers? It's just Art Street right there. Henry would be delivered to friends in Philadelphia. Then he printed on this crate in big letters, this side up with care. Now in Philadelphia, Philadelphia was a free state. There weren't any slaves in Philadelphia. Henry needed an excuse to stay home or the work boss would think he had run off. James pointed to Henry. James pointed to Henry's sore finger but Henry knew it wasn't bad enough. He opened a bottle of oil of vitriol, which is acid. No, cried James. Henry poured it on his hand. It burned his skin to the bone. Wow. Now the boss would have to let him stay home. Now that's called desperate. Dr. Smith bandaged Henry's hand they arranged to meet the next morning at four o'clock before anybody woke up. The sun was not yet up when Henry climbed into the box. Ready, he said. James nailed down the lid. Dr. Smith and James drove to the station. The railway clerk tipped the box over and nailed a paper to the bottom. Dr. Smith begged the clerk to be careful, but they didn't listen. They threw the box into the baggage car. Hmm. Can you see that? There's James driving the cart. There's Dr. Smith. You see it upside down, sideways, Philadelphia. Hours passed. Henry was lifted up and thrown again. Look at Henry. Ooh. Upside down, he heard waves splashing. This must be the steamboat headed for Washington, D.C. The ship rode smoothly. But Henry was still upside down. 
Mm. Blood rushed to his head. His face got hot. His eyes ached. And he thought his head would burst. But he was afraid to move. Someone might hear him. Mm. That had to be miserable. Would you try to fix yourself? Make yourself sit up right? Would you take that chance? I'm tired of standing, someone said. Right here. Why don't we move this box and sit on it? Said another. Henry held his breath. Oh my goodness, someone was close. Could they be talking about his box? Henry was pushed. The box scraped the deck. Now he was on his right side. Now on his left. And suddenly, right side up. What do you think is in here? Said the first man. Mail, I guess, said another. I am mail, thought Henry, but not the kind they imagined. Henry was carried off the steamboat and placed in a railroad car, this time head up. He fell asleep to the rattling song of the train's wheels. Finally, some peace. If they only knew. I wonder what would happen if the box came open while they were flipping it. He awoke to a loud knocking. Henry, are you all right in there? All right, he answered. The cover was pried open. Henry stretched and stood up. Four men smiled at him. Welcome to Philadelphia. Look, look at the men. They're black and white men. How do you think Henry feels finally reaching freedom? The end. You may be facing a situation similar to Henry's. Our world has changed quite a bit. You may have lost friends or family members who are no longer with us for some reason or another. But just as Henry hoped for a better future, so can we. Thank you.